got Brett Denon here in the studio. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hey, thanks for having me. Playing the Folk Festival today. Mm-hmm. Or you haven't been there yet, but I'm sure you've done the festival I, before. I've done many festivals, and I've been to many beautiful cities, and I came here, and I was like, wow, this is one of the most beautiful cities I've been to in a little while. So I have a feeling the festival's going to be great. However, it's pretty hot outside. Yeah, it's like 34 today. Oh, It's going uh, to be fun. Yeah. Especially for a big guy like yourself. Exactly. <laughs> Um, and what, have you traveled the mountains yet? Did you come here from the west or did you come up from the east or something? Uh, we came from the air uh, and landed land in there. an airport. So uh, we saw the airport first and then drove in. And uh, we had an early flight and a late show last night in on? Edmonton. Oh, okay. So uh, I, I, I took a nap this morning. Fair enough. First time in Alberta? <laughs> yeah, this trip has been my first time in Alberta, and I love it. Yeah. That's cool. Are there a lot of places on this new tour that you haven't been yet? Are you starting to branch out into those kind of markets? Well, in, in, in terms of Canada, yeah. I mean, we went to Montreal and Toronto, but I've, I've played both those cities before and i've been to vancouver before but not to play music so oh, really? the day after tomorrow we're going to vancouver are you driving are you uh, we're flying again you miss the mountain again. i know one of these days we're gonna we're gonna do it by road and i'm gonna love it and i'm gonna see a moose and i'm gonna freak out <laughs> and it's yeah. gonna be the best day of my life amazing <laughs> but i'm sure you've done the road thing in the states before. yes and we've been all i've been you know i've been through all the all the different parts of the United States and seeing all the beautiful landscapes there. Um, so I, I kind of have a clue as to how it might be here, mm-hmm. but you never really know That's until, true, until you see it. exactly. It's a mm-hmm. You grew up in California, and I heard you held, headlined the Fillmore and the Fonda the other week. That's amazing. Yeah. You know those venues? I do. Well, I know the Fonda. I've never been to San Francisco, though. San Francisco is probably, you know, my favorite city in the world. And I say that because I'm sort of from there and I have an attachment to it. Um, So, and the Fillmore is a legendary venue. Oh, yeah. And, you know, it's kind of the epicenter of everything that went down in the 60s and the Summer of Love and the Grateful Dead. And that was the venue that everybody played at. And it was like, you know, you were nothing until you played the Fillmore. Nowadays, people play, you know, big arenas and Mm -hmm. stuff like that. But the Fillmore was like the place where Jimi Hendrix would play or Janis Joplin or Santana or something. So the County Crows more recently. In the County Crows. I love the County Crows. They're a great Bay Bay Area local band. They need to put out a new record. I hear they're working on one. Really? Interesting. How how do they do up here? Are they pretty good? Are they pretty big? They were. Really? I mean, I saw them last summer and it was sold out. Mm -hmm. It was nice in Toronto at the big amphitheater. It's like 20,000 people. Awesome. Not bad. Yeah, they were co-headlined with Goo Goo Dolls, so across okay. the, the crowds, but I mean, good show. More of more on the Counting Crows tip than I am yeah, the Goo Goo Dolls tip. Back in the day, Goo Goo Dolls were okay. Lately, mm-hmm. it's kind of like, probably some better stuff, dude. <laughs> Speaking of which, though, you've got gray hair. Got a gray hair, dude. He does have gray hair and big, <laughs> big arms. He's, but he's buffed. <laughs> he's got a nice chin. <laughs> nice chin. Um, your lyrics, though, amazing. Thanks. There's, there's some stuff I just sit there and I'm like, wow. Even that, just the one line of, when I wrote it down, too. People walk a tightrope on a razor's edge. Not like a deep line or anything. It's just just a really cool way of saying it. Well, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, it's like a balancing act or maybe people have a lot of pressure on them or they build up a lot of pressure. And, you know, I mean, razor's edge means what it means to whomever. But um, I think basically what I'm trying to say is um, there's a a lot of built up stuff. You know, there's people. I feel like a lot of people have so much going on so much built up that and there's a lot of anger and hatred and stuff buried down deep inside that i sometimes i feel like any minute it can erupt or fall apart or snap yeah well, you talk about that a lot on the record there's yeah a bunch of stuff i mean the fear-based culture that the states has now sure it's starting to come up here i think it is a little way. bit i you know i was in edmonton i saw some somebody with a sign on the side of the road that said stop the americanization of canada and i was like whoa it's, it's getting heavy up here yeah and um but yeah i mean it's a big it's a big issue in the states you know there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of hatred and there's a lot of there's a lot of unfairness and injustice going on and there's a there's a lot of fear for sure and there's a lot of demoralization of of people and um that's what i like to sing about the most you know giving people hope and trying to offer you know a bigger picture and and um trying to make a positive impact on the world through positive conscious lyrics and a good message you know happy little tunes yeah you, you play a lot of stuff higher up on the guitar i've noticed we were talking yeah. about before a little bit do you ever play stuff like on the low end of the guitar too because everything yeah. higher up is that just to suit your voice or is that just no 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 no, no 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 it depends on what i'm going for like ain't song most of my songs are 
done in the first position, which means, you know, the first three or four frets. Um, But then other times when I'm trying to do, like, um, more, get more of, like, an African sound or uh, something like that, or I, I try to, I try to go up. To the to the higher notes and use a capo to get those really really high f- uh, configurations of chords. Yeah, what I'm thinking of though is uh, that f- what was the first blessed way back. Blessed is song. not. That's all done on. Um, is done in. Uh, it's like it's the song. Have you played with one guitar. This it sounds like it needs two. Really? Well, when I'm li- when I'm live, I play with two. But really, I mean, I'm just playing. It, it's in C, but I'm playing it up here and. And it's uh, a lot of, I mean, it's just different voicings, I think, of chords that you, you know, standard chords. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. It's funny, because I heard it probably about a year ago now, and not many people had heard of you at the time. Mayor was telling me, this, this dude, Brett Denham, you got to check him out. So yeah? Blessed. It's amazing. That's and then cool. And he went on tour with him. And I thought, I was like, oh, no way. Wow. And he really did it. That's cool. He wasn't cool. just saying, check this guy out. Uh, thanks, John Mayer. Yeah. Is John Mayer you're talking about, right? Yeah. Not uh, Freddie Mayer or Mayer. Lucinda Mayer, <laughs> no. you know? Johnny Mayer. <laughs> or the other mayors out there in the world. Oscar Mayer. Mayer. Ma- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Joni Mitchell, I heard you're a big fan. What do you think of her Starbucks thing? She signed a Starbucks now with McCartney. She did? Yeah, like three days ago. I think that's great. Really? Yeah, honestly, I do. She's one of my all-time favorite songwriters. And, I mean, you you know as well as I know the music business is crazy. I mean, I got into playing music wanting to be like all my heroes and like put out a bunch of great records and do things the traditional standard way. And now with the managers I work with and the record label I work with, it's like every time I have an idea about what I want to do, they're like, well, that's the music industry 10 years ago, five years ago. That's the music industry last year. It's changing every day. And it's like, Labels are getting, having you know less and less power, and these different models are are coming forward. And Starbucks has been a huge retailer in um, selling actual discs, which is hard to do because it's hard for labels to sell discs these okay. days. You know, there's a whole generation of people who would never even consider getting their music um, in a store. Yeah, you know, right, in a yeah. plastic case. It's like music is something I either download for free or I get it off iTunes or some other yeah, source for yeah. for downloading. And so, and Starbucks has been uh, really successful in um, kind of changing the way that um, the music industry is. And they started a, a, a label and Paul McCartney's on it and he's been doing well. And it, it's awesome for Joni Mitchell to, to if she makes a big record and yeah, sells a lot and does a big tour, I'm going to freak out and I'm going to like bug the heck out of my manager every day and say, can I open for, can, can I, I open, yeah, yeah. <laughs> can I open for Joni Mitchell? Because, um, you know, I've told my girlfriend many, many a times if, um, the only woman I'd leave her with would leave her for would be Joni Mitchell. I don't, I don't care how old she is. I just want her to sing wanted. me to sleep. Right. <laughs> yeah, she could. I know, man. She's the best. Um, what, how do you feel about that? that? You mentioned kids don't even buy their records. And I think it's great. I mean, it's 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 the new the new way is taking over. The old way is changing all all the time. You know, pretty soon it's going to be all digital. And, and for those of us who love to have um, the records and the the artwork and everything we're just we gonna artwork, right? yeah but i mean to have the album artwork i think it's sad for those of us who like that but um i think it's gonna make the industry advance a lot more and maybe like you know change shape to to move towards a more digital digital world i mean it's already happening but i mean you can't you got you got to keep up with change and technology i mean if you if you try to fight it then you get you get kind of left behind and it's it's just different tools, it's different words, it's different situations. But, I mean, this has been happening all throughout history. There's changes always always happen. So instead of trying to fight against the change, it's better to just, um, I think, deal with it and learn how to make the best of it and use it to your advantage. Cool. As long as it's not, you know, hurting anybody. And if it's the big, giant labels that take a fall, then... Or the big corporations, or whatever, then that might not necessarily be a bad thing. Puts the power back in the artist. Hand. Exactly. Hopefully. Yep. Let's see how it works. It's awesome. We do this thing five questions. Okay. Five quick questions, one word answers. iPod or CDs? I, I have to choose one or the other? Yeah. Like iPod. on the road? What are you using right now? I have an iPod. Lennon McCartney. <laughs> 
Lennon all the way. Come on. <laughs> hey, you know, there's some good for no one. That's there's, you know, Paul McCartney is the man. I mean, what they did together, you know, it should be Lennon, McCartney, or Martin. Because what they did with George Martin, I mean, but for me, it's Lennon is the, the rugged, you know, activist and fighter for love, you know, that, that broke all the rules. And that's that's who I admire. Cool. Alcohol and marijuana. <sighs> Gosh, I guess I, do, I drink alcohol more than marijuana so, than I smoke marijuana. So drinking some pot. I don't drink pot, but I love a scotch. Cool. Uh, song you've written you're most proud of? The Ain't No Reason. How come? I think it's because it's short, it's to the point, and it's got a good message. And it sums up the record pretty well. Yeah. That's, the first that's, not, that's, me. Cool. that's not me. In one word, Brett Down. One word? One word. Sum up your music, not yourself. That's kind of hard. Uh, honest. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, tell us about the Mosaic Project. What's that all about? It's, uh, when I was in college, I was in a social justice program called uh, Community Studies and Social Change, and it was a combination of activism and social theory and uh, working with nonprofit organizations and um, activist groups. And um, I found out about this program that was just beginning called the Mosaic Project. And so I joined in. I was one of the founding members, and I helped write a whole curriculum with them and them. Um, yeah in a whole musical curriculum, everything we teach has a song that goes with it. And it's basically what we do is we bring fourth and fifth graders of extremely different backgrounds, racial, ethnic, religious, um, economic backgrounds, um, bring them together in a situation where, you know, we mix them up into different groups around kids they don't know that they've never experienced before and expose them to a whole curriculum of building community across our differences and celebrating diversity and, and understanding that, you know, like we can build community across our differences and drawing parallels to the work that we're doing at this school to what's going on in the whole world. So we, we might talk about bullying on the playground or cliques or different racial groups that hang out together in different parts of the Bay Area. And then we like draw a parallel to war or to, you know, what's happening in the Middle East or whatever. And um, it's a pretty phenomenal program. I'm, yeah, sounds yeah. Cool. You still have time to do that? I don't have time to actually work there anymore. I'm on the board of directors now, and I'm out there, like, kind of holding the torch so the rest of the world can, you know, doing stuff like this with you right now and directing people to the website. What is the website? www.mosaicproject.org. Cool. And I'm just trying to spread the word about it. Is it only in the Bay Area? You're trying to break it. It's only in the Bay Area. Um, eventually, though, we'll have a model that we can use to incorporate into different places all yeah, around. Cool. Yeah. Nice. And uh, I hear also a little portion of your proceeds from every show go to charity. Um, local charity? Is that true? Local charities. Yeah, that's something that we did on the last tour. We haven't been able to get it together on this tour because it takes a lot of planning we've been bringing nonprofits out for every show and having them talk about what they're doing let me talk about like a local issue that they're that they're working to bring change um for and um and just connecting the audience to this nonprofit organization and you know having the nonprofit organization uh give a list of ways they can help or get involved and you know having music being played the whole time and so that's cool yeah we're gonna see a lot of the folk festival today Good. There's a lot of little booths with stuff set up, and it's awesome. That's, you know, I mean, that's the most important thing about a community is getting people organized and working to always make things better. Mm -hmm. So so I found the folk festival take you on at 420, I heard, which is a great time. I'm on a 420 at a um, Songwriters in a Round, and then I'm doing a tweener. Like a little workshop thing? It's like one of those, you know, you get three or four songwriters together, and they sit on a stage and take turns. Well, I think usually what happens is you take turns doing a song, and then I think it's like usually it's it's encouraged that people play together. And sometimes it's it's happy and peaceful and nice, but then sometimes in certain circles that I've been in, it can get pretty competitive. Oh, really? Yeah, so I don't, I don't think anything's going to go down like that, but... Um, there's always the possibility. I don't know. I hope not. It should be a nice laid-back atmosphere. Yeah, I hope so. Cool. Yeah. And then what else? Yeah. And then tomorrow we're doing three shows. I'm going to do a, a band set with um, a drummer named Randy who flew here with me sleeping oh, in the hotel. Okay, cool. Yeah, I couldn't bring the rest of the band because the rest of the band was in a, also in a band called ALO, the Animal Li oh, Liberation yeah, Orchestra. That? 
Yeah. Well, Zach, not Zach, though, the guitar player and the bass player. Cool. And they had to go on the road. They're, they're going on the road doing their own tour, and then they're going to Japan or something like that. And so so we have to get a new band, and a new band comes in Vancouver. So we got a couple shows, just me and the drummer. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, it's going to be, different. yeah. Pedal, play some stuff over each other. Yeah. Nice. Loop pedal? Yeah. I don't do any of that you don't stuff. Do the I, you know, I admire people that can do it. I don't admire a lot of people who can do it. Sometimes it can be a little distracting, but folks like that guy, Howie Day, really, I think, has a grip on it. Yeah, he's good. And it's like he kind of he kind of makes everybody else look a little silly. <laughs> I'm not like a huge Howie Day fan, but and I, don't, I can't really name one of his songs, but I saw a DVD where he did it, and I was like, wow. Mm-hmm. You know, Damien Rice, when he was first, I think, going around touring and stuff before he had a big band, he was doing it too, and he oh, was he was putting people to shame. He is the too. man. Yeah, I know. I love he, <laughs> he is awesome. Great song, yeah. I mean, he he, he com- some. I think he comes across a little too heavy sometimes, but that's not a that's not a bad thing. It's just for my own personal taste. But that guy, man, he he goes there. You played any shows in it? Yeah, we did. Uh, yeah, I opened for him um, in Seattle, Washington, and um, it's this beautiful. Um, it's called Benaroya Hall. It was this big symphony, and this oh, big right. beautiful um, symphony where all the wood was, you know, built a specific way so that it was like made for music. And you oh, could, cool. I mean, he he went in there with a huge band and like rocked the place. But I and I could uh, when I, in sound check, I was playing acoustically and singing, and you could hear. it perfectly from the back That's row awesome. it's pretty cool show? i think so i think it's out there somewhere i have a i have a website or i don't have it but somebody set up a website of a bunch of live shows and trading it's called messages com. Oh, so cool. yeah i like yeah. that kind of stuff yeah you see a lot of dave matthew stuff out. yeah yeah t- there's the man right there yeah you know that guy is the bomb play some songs for us i'd love to let's uh let's talk about the songs first because i'm gonna head in the other room you got it and get it uh so ain't no reason tell me about that song um ain't no reason well that was one of the ones we were talking about before i think it's just um it's sort of an observation about things i i think are are building underneath people's skin and under the skin of of um of people and specifically in America. And, um, you know, I think I touch on a lot of different things and I'm not trying to be general. I'm just trying to like let everything that, that I thought of in a stream of consciousness sort of writing, um, come in, come into play when I was writing it. And, but then there's like a, the, in the, the chorus is the lines that say love will come and set me free. And that's kind of like just a, I guess that's me and in, in my religion, maybe you know if i if I have one that's that's the faith in me that that kind of plays the devil's advocate to the verses saying, you know what what are we doing, how are we going to fix what we're doing you know yeah. so, so it's kind of like Dylan kind of style verse with the Beatles kind of chorus really in a way. well, just the way you're writing it, huh the whole love thing in the chorus but yeah very social chorus. yeah John Lennon wrote a lot about a lot of songs just. About love, the, so that love is real. That song is, yeah. is ridiculous, man. Love, God is love. Is that God? The one where I don't believe in Beatles. Huh? No, no, no. That, well, that's God is yeah. God is a concept, but in that song, love is touch, touch yeah. is love is yeah. That's right. God is love. It's beautiful, oh, man. I know. Um, what else are you gonna play for? She's mine. She's mine, which is the current single, and that's um that's a song. That's like a just a traveler walking through um, the streets of, um, you know, any given situation. And, and just, I think, being um, tempted by lots of deception and trickery and um, holding true to what you believe inside so that, you know, you're not going to let anybody, like, blow your candle out or you're not going to let anybody taint or, um, Im- you know, taint your purity. Cool. And um, I'm also going to do the song we were talking about earlier, uh, The One Who Loves You The Most, which is actually the song that brought me to Canada because mm-hmm. Rogers Wireless or Rogers Community, I don't even know the name of the corporate, the big corporation, Rogers, Rogers. Yeah. used it's it on, um, yeah, on one of their commercials for um, like Rogers TV. Mm-hmm. And so, and that's a, it's, it's, it's a bit of, it's a, it's a devotional song. It's a love song. It's really about loving yourself, though. Do you see revenue from that kind of thing? Like, do you, do you notice that? Yeah, I mean, it's not. It's usually like a like a lump sum. So, but it's not like every time I 
it it plays. I get I get a check or something like that. It's like I make a deal, and it, it was a nice deal. It, it allowed me to travel a little bit more comfortably for that time being when I was on the road. Yeah, it helps. I mean, it helps to in this day and age. It helps to find any kind of like I, I'm on an independent label. Where and I don't have a world. I have a world deal with them, but they what they do is they they contract out to different distributors, mm-hmm. the different countries, and um, my label doesn't put up money for me to really like travel and be out on the road to, to help, you know. But it's a blessing because I'm on an independent label, and so yeah, I have a, a you know way. I have to do it my way. And but you know if you're on a major label, a lot of artists who are on a major label can get like you know money to to live in a bus on the road. I don't have that luxury i have other luxuries so when something like that comes in like a sync licensing or something like that on a tv show or you know on a commercial it's nice because that kind of helps you live a little bit more comfortably on the road yeah, it's funny people used to think of that as selling up no, you know what it's, it's not you, have to I, you know you, you can still think of it depends it, selling out maybe if you use your your music to sell a certain product that you wouldn't normally believe in but it's happened with a, another one of my songs, the song "Blessed" that you're talking about earlier. Oh, yeah. Got got on a, in in the United States, it got on a, a Hilton commercial, <laughs> and um, it's like you you I guess you just have to value what is it that it's selling, like what yeah. you know how bad or how good is the company that your song is helping Sounds to sell like a product for, and it's like yeah, I mean, and it's like and ultimately though, looking beyond that, it's like. What is it really doing? It's getting my music out there into what you know. I have a hard time getting songs on the radio. You know, I I'm, it's 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 picking up, right? Yeah. But you know, I've been doing this for four years, and it's just now this last year been starting to pick up. So, and John Mellencamp said when they asked him about his song, I, you probably never saw the commercial here because no, we have it. Yeah. It's okay. Same commercial. Same commercial, yeah. and it says like Chevrolet's America yeah. no, it was just or whatever. Standard. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, they've just completely switched it. But and he says from the East Coast to the West Coast and all that, yeah, like, well, th- this is our country or so whatever the song. That's great. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> well, anyways, he's when somebody, people were grilling him about that for a long time because he's such a blue collar, he comes across as such a blue collar yeah. working man's musician, and he is. I mean, in the tradition of um, Springsteen and all that. Um, he said, I heard him say in, in and like when I heard him say this, I was like, "Yeah, he's the man." I'm, I'm not going to let anybody criticize me. He said, "Chevrolet has been the best record label I've ever been on," <laughs> and it's true, man. I mean that he said, you know, he he made and that was an old song from an old record a couple years back, and he heard that the, the most recent Tom Petty record, and he goes, "Man, Tom Petty's songs can't get on the radio. If he can, if he can't get on the radio, I sure as heck can't get on the radio." So I gotta figure out some other way to get my songs out there, and um, luckily he found that commercial, or that commercial found him, and you know it it, it reintroduced the world, or at least you know Canada and the United States to to that song and his his music. So yeah, the Cougar, the Coog. <laughs> Petty's new record's amazing, though. It is, yeah, but, but it's not on the radio like he used to be on. Well, no. What, what's your format? What do you call AAA. it? Triple A. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So I love Triple A, by the way. That's it's the only the, station that plays good music. Right. <laughs> there's some hot AC stations out there who are playing, who who are doing some good music, and some, you know, there's great radio stations out there. But um, yeah. I mean, Tom Petty used to be like number one on the pop charts. You know, mm-hmm. it's not the same that, that no, he used to be. He's 50 years old now. Well, so yeah, but he's still a, he's a legend. He's yeah. written some of the greatest songs ever. And he continues to do it. I know, but they're not on the radio. No. Not so much. <laughs>